Welcome to Brimley State Park. Brimley State Park is in the eastern end of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We're about 11 miles west of Sault Ste. Marie. We're actually in the town of Brimley, and that's where the park got its name because of the history of it. The original land was donated by the village of Brimley to the state of Michigan in 1923, making it one of the oldest state parks, not just in the UP, but in the, the park system in general. It's not a real big park. We kind of joked about how in our campsite you could do a 360 and see essentially the entire state park. It's true. It's only 160 some acres and the majority of that I think is the campground itself with over 230 sites, um, which makes it a pretty kind of cramped and packed in campground area because you've got 230 sites and they are all in one section we've seen that many campsites in other state parks but usually they're in multiple loops or multiple little areas but in this case it is one just up and down row and you know row 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 and sites kind of all over the place so there's a variety of sites in terms of sizes and kind of the layout because it's all in one big loop and so um, you've got sort of regular sites in the middle they're kind of more of an open field type feel some of the ones along the outside or along the woods on one end, you've got Lake Superior on the other side of the park. So there's trees and then the lake. You have um, sites that are along the side by the day use area that are, and, and the ones by Lake Superior and the ones by the day use area are, are sort of sideways pull through sites. In uh, some cases, depending on what you have, if you've just got a tent or a small rig, you can probably pull in just fine. But but even the map, the campground map, when you get and you check in, designates which sites are pull through. And it shows you whether they're straight in and out or if they're sideways sites. And I found that really helpful because that kind of gives you an idea when you go to book your site or when you arrive, which direction you'll want to come in from. They have uh, 30 and 50 amp, depending on the site mm -hmm. that you have. So that's something to look at too when you're when you're registering or when you arrive here. So it's nice they have that. Uh, we mentioned that you could see the whole state park from our campsite. So you have the campground, uh, then you have a day use area, which has got some grills and open grass. Uh, there's a pretty nice playscape for the kids there. The playscape is one of those new, nice, modern kind with the different climbing apparatuses and slides. We're starting to see those types of playscapes in many of the state parks, thanks to the Friends of the Park Systems and your donations like returnables and cans and that kind of thing. It is a budgetary issue, and there are priorities that they have to do to keep maintenance up on certain items. and. You know, replacing old slides and swings probably isn't a, a high priority. So it's nice that the Friends of the Park systems exist and they're able to do some fundraising. If you can leave behind your returnable bottles and cans, you know, for the Michigan deposit, that helps. If you can throw a donation here and there, that's that's really helpful for them to be able to do that and have these nice playscapes for the kids. Uh, also, off of the day use area, there's, there's two beaches, technically. Um, there's two areas to get down to the beach. One's a little closer to the campground, one's a little further away not much beach right now because Lake Superior is high like many of the Great Lakes. When you're down on the beach you've got a great view of the Whitefish Bay slash St. Mary's River section of Lake Superior and that's where you can watch all the freighters get ready as they head into the Sioux Locks um, in Sioux St. Marie. So you'll see sometimes the freighters just parked out here as they're waiting their turn to go into the locks or just passing by and if you have a chance to catch one of them going by at night it's really cool when they're all lit up. It is a good area to head down there with some binoculars or in uh, one of the beach access points, they have those distance viewers, um, machines, whatever those are called. Um, <laughs> and that, those are pretty strong and you're able, because the freighters are pretty far out at times and you can really get in closer to them and see them. They're kind of cool because they're so big and, and to see them moving through. Given that Brimley is one of the oldest state parks in the system, it is showing its age a bit, especially in the bathroom facilities. Um, in the one that's closest to our campground, there's just three or four stalls each for men and women and one shower for men and women in the bathroom area, which was surprised to me. I'm thinking, wow, that's it. That's all I've got. Then I realized there are two other bathroom facilities in this campground. And at least the other one that I visited had uh, five separate shower stalls that are gender neutral, um, which makes it much easier when you're trying to share bathroom time with an entire campground. I did not visit the third one because it is way off in the other corner of the park. Um, but no, don't let it deter you if you walk into the really old one and go, oh my God, there's only one shower here. Nope, just head on over to the other campground, or sorry, head on over to the other bathroom um, where there's a few more options. 
It's one of those things where, I mean, the bathrooms work. So oh, they're when, fine. When oh, they're, my gosh. It was a hot shower, too. <laughs> when you're looking at budgetary issues, which the Department of Natural Resources is facing, they have to do maintenance and upkeep, and they're not able to upgrade parks. And I think they probably spent some money here upgrading electric, mm -hmm. which they needed to do, and they have the bigger sites, that kind of thing. Uh, but if the bathroom's working, you know, they don't have to replace it. They're not going to. So that's where you, if you can help out the friends of the park system, if you haven't bought your annual recreation passport, go buy it. It's $11, gets you into every state park. I'm going to keep pitching that because, <laughs> and, and when you camp here, that's where they get their funds really for right. the campgrounds is if you rent or, or, you know, stay in a campsite and pay for that, that's where they get their funding for that. They also do have a decent pavilion here though, over in the day use area. Uh, that's, uh, closed in for the weather but it's got nice windows all the way around so you can see out to the lake and, and see what that looks like and that does have a couple of bathrooms there too so somebody wants to rent the pavilion for a picnic or family reunion type thing so it's nice to see that as with many of the other state parks brimley hosts a harvest festival in the fall in this case it's the last two weekends of september and those are really popular so the park is already decorated uh, for that event even though it's not for another week um, but those fill up. So even though we're here in early mid-September and the park is only has a handful of people camping in it. I mean, it's mostly pretty empty. By next weekend, it's going to be full uh, because those harvest fests are really popular. There's trick-or-treating, pumpkin decorating, chili cook-offs, and a lot of just different fun activities for both adults and kids alike. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure that you book up really early to get in your spot for those fall festivals as well as just during the summer, because this is one of those places where there's a lot to see and do around the surrounding area. Um, you're gonna wanna get your reservations in early because you're not too far away from Sault Ste. Marie, Taquamanan Falls, Whitefish Point, And this is a pretty good place that you could hang out and then just make a bunch of day trips from here. There is the Point Iroquois Lighthouse that we went to yesterday on our way in here. That's kind of neat. That one's actually, there's not as much to see maybe at some other lighthouses um, because it's being restored over the years, but it's free. It's by donation. So make a donation if you go there, but you can climb up into the tower. Uh, there's a museum there that you can see, you know, things and how they were and, you know, as they were running this lighthouse over the years. So it's kind of neat to see that. A lot of things to do in the area for day trips. The park itself is pretty small. As we described it, you can see it by standing in one place and turning <laughs> in a circle, but that's okay. It works for a lot of people. It's a busy park at different times of the year and it seems to work for folks. It's a decent little campground. If you're just looking for a place to stay, this would be the one because then it would get you to a lot of those other local attractions. So keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.